Cruise News time. And well, if you've been tracking along, you know I just got out of an interesting scenario. I was stuck at sea for a day while I waited for the Port of Tampa to reopen to allow the cruise ship that I was on to return. Hurricane hit the Port of Tampa while I was out cruising. Imagine that. And many of you have heard this story and said, well, that's great. You got a whole extra day of cruising. It didn't cost you anything. You got the run of the cruise ship. You got to spend an extra day with your wife. And well, for me personally, all of that is true. It was super awesome to have an extra day at sea, an extra day using all of the cruise ship's amenities, and an extra day with my wife. But guess what? I was not the only person on that cruise ship. And while I was dancing around in gleeful joy, there were some people that were downright upset, downright stressed out, downright frustrated, and all of that upsetness, stressed out, frustration played out in a meeting that the cruise captain had with cruisers who gathered together in the main theater on the Carnival Paradise. And it got so heated at one point, there was a man yelling at the cruise captain. Angry passengers stuck on a cruise ship. Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views for your face. And today we're going to focus on what happened at the Normandy Theater on the Carnival Paradise just a couple days ago as the crew tried to relate to us what was going on with our late arrival back to the port of Tampa. Now I'm going to tell you a few key takeaways on the front end. Uh, the first key takeaway is I don't think that people properly anticipate what could happen on a cruise vacation. It could be from inexperience. They may be new cruisers. It could be from a lot of experience where nothing's happened to them on a cruise ship. But I found the people that were upset in that theater were people that had not properly anticipated what could happen to them while cruising, and more specifically, what could happen to them while cruising during hurricane season. As you may know, Hurricane Adelia shut down the port of Tampa on Tuesday when the ship that we were on, the Carnival Paradise, was set to return to the Port of Tampa on Thursday. On Wednesday, Hurricane Adalia churned through the Gulf of Mexico, past the Port of Tampa, causing a storm surge that increased the water level in the Tampa Bay. It also caused some flooding around the port area, and it required the Coast Guard to examine the port and the Bay Area before it allowed any marine traffic into the harbor. Now, we were notified on Wednesday that our return to the Port of Tampa would be delayed. And we were also notified that the timing of that return would be tied to the Coast Guard giving the approval to reopen the port. Tentatively, they told us that instead of arriving early on Thursday morning at the Port of Tampa, that we would try to disembark in the afternoon around 3 p.m. on Thursday. When we woke up on Thursday morning, the anticipation was that we would still disembark at 3 p.m. that day. But as the morning progressed on, it became obvious that the Port of Tampa would still be closed and that the 3 p.m. target was probably not realistic. A little bit after 12 p.m. on Thursday, there was an announcement that the cruise director and the captain and a couple other officers would be holding a meeting in the main theater on the cruise ship to give the latest update on our return to Tampa. In that meeting, the captain described that the Coast Guard was still assessing the port, that the port had not been reopened at that time, but there was a new tentative plan to re-enter the harbor around 3 p.m. to bring the pilot on board and then to navigate back to the port of Tampa with an arrival time of around 7 p.m. with a possible disembarkation of the cruise ship at 7.30 p.m. The cruise director, the captain, the other officers there made it clear that this was contingent on the Coast Guard giving their approval to reopen the port. And then they opened up the floor for questions, and that's when it got a little heated. Like I said previously, one of the big takeaways here is that people do not anticipate this situation. And so the first series of questions clearly evidence of people not anticipating the situation. The first question came from a lady who wanted to know if Carnival would be paying for their hotel if they had to stay the night in Tampa. And well, much to the disappointment of the lady, she was informed that Carnival would not be paying for her hotel accommodation if she had to stay the night in Tampa. Another question that was asked was by a woman who had a flight that she was going to miss because it occurred before even this proposed docking time. 
She wanted to know if Carnival would allow her to have access to the telephone without her waiting in line at guest services to ask to use the telephone. Would she be able to use the telephone to make travel arrangements? And well, to her disappointment, she was told that she would not be able to use the telephone that the primary reason that everybody had gotten free internet on the cruise ship is so that they could use the internet to make their travel arrangements, that the cruise ship did not have telephone capabilities for everybody to use to rebook their travel. And even the ability to use the telephone was challenged because we were still at sea. And so again, uh, that was a no to that question. Another question that came up was a question from a lady who had plans to go to Orlando after her cruise. And she wanted to know if Carnival would be providing a shuttle to Orlando for her. They asked her had she booked any kind of transfer or shuttle service from the cruise line. She said no. And then to her disappointment, she was told that Carnival would not be providing a shuttle for her to Orlando. Another question was asked by a gentleman who was concerned whether or not the roads around the Port of Tampa would be open were all of the major highways open? And if the major highways were not open, what would Carnival do to make sure that he was able to get home if the roads were closed? Much to his disappointment, Carnival told him that their primary concern was to get the ship docked and to get the passengers disembarked. The ability for passengers to travel the roads around Tampa didn't necessarily fall under their purvey. And so they could not give him a a satisfactory answer to his question of, are the roads open? And if they're not, what would happen? And then there were a couple more questions, primarily around who was gonna pay for things. If I have to book a new flight because I couldn't make my previous flight, is Carnival gonna pay for that? Again, there was the question about, will Carnival pay for my hotel? Will Carnival pay to get me here? Will Carnival pay to do this? Will Carnival pay to do that? Again, I think it shows a lack of forethought. And one of the reasons I'm making this video is just hopefully, I can put the message out there so that people know it in advance. In scenarios like this, if you didn't book your air through the cruise line, they're not going to be paying for or rebooking your air. They're not going to be coming up with transportation for you in a scenario where they had no control over the delay. Essentially, scenarios like this are part of the risk of travel. And when you travel, you're the one assuming the risk. The cruise line will not be responsible, soup to nuts, for everything that happens on a trip. They're only going to be responsible for the things that they are responsible for, which is essentially taking you out on a cruise ship and getting you back to the cruise port. And they can only do that depending on what scenarios they're presented with. And this closed port isn't something that they did. And therefore, they're not going to be responsible for every outcome that happens because of the hurricane. I know it probably seems obvious to people that travel a lot, but there were enough questions in that theater that made me realize that it's probably not obvious to everybody. Now, a second takeaway that I had here, and this relates to the man yelling at the captain, sometimes when we communicate to people about things that are so familiar to us, we forget that they may not be so familiar to other people. And this is where this exchange happened. As the cruise director was moving from one questioner to another, a booming voice came from the balcony yelling at the captain saying, hey man, you said that we we're going to enter the harbor at 3 p.m. Why are you not letting us off the cruise ship until 7.30? What are you trying to pull here when we're trying to rebook our flights? And to the captain's credit, he was completely unfazed by the yelling. I think he's probably been in these stressful situations before. And one of the other officers on the stage answered the question very calmly saying, look, we're essentially at the mouth of the harbor. We're still 13 miles away from the port of Tampa Bay. The pilot gets on the cruise ship here, but the journey from this point into the port of Tampa Bay still takes three and a half to four hours. And the guy up in the balcony yells out the obvious thing. Well, you should have made that clearer when you were explaining it to us the first time. And I, I had to agree. And then I thought, well, why didn't they explain it? And of course, that made me realize that this thing's so familiar to them. They go in and out of the Port of Tampa all the time that they probably took for granted that everybody thought that. I think at the end of the day, a lot of this comes down to stress over money. A lot of the questions revolved around compensation and being paid for expenses that cruisers did not anticipate needing to pay for. 
it's a simple discussion again. When you go traveling, you have to have travel insurance or you have to be self-insured. And when I say self-insured, you have to have money for a rainy day or access to money for a rainy day because sometimes things go wrong. And I've been in scenarios where I'm traveling on a shoestring budget and that any disruption of that budget could be very stressful for me. And I know that a lot of people are in that scenario. And so this really kind of is a public service announcement. When you're cruising during times like hurricane season or when you're cruising or traveling at all, there is a slight risk that things will go wrong. And unfortunately, when things go wrong, if they're outside of the control of a travel company, a cruise company, a travel provider, they are going to define what their responsibility is. And anything that falls outside of that responsibility will be the responsibility of the traveler to take care of. And so know to the best of your ability that anytime that you go on a cruise or anytime that you travel, you got to keep some sort of way to possibly get an extra hotel or possibly get an extra flight. And I know that's a bigger ask than possible sometimes, but you got to keep it in mind that that's going to be the scenario that you could be in if something like this happens. Let me kick it over to you. How do you guys handle these what if scenarios? Do you have extra money stashed aside? Do you use travel insurance? Do you have a credit card that you can charge to? What are some of the techniques that you use or do you just risk it for the biscuit like I know I have in the past? I would love to hear some conversation around this. Leave a comment below. Now I did do a walk around ship tour of the Carnival Paradise. Showed her in her glory even though she She's over 20 years old. If you'd like to check that video out, I'll leave that linked in the first comment or I'll leave it linked in the description. Uh, I'd love to hear some feedback on that. Do you think she's a pretty old cruise ship or do you think she needs a little bit of a makeover? Uh, that would be interesting also. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. Please hit the like button on your way out. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye. Cruise news. Cruise news. Cruise news.